morning. It is October 10th. It is Thursday, and we'll be Thursday all day. So whatever your Thursday plans may be, today's the day to do them. Right? <laughs> you think? Hello, I am Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. Thank you for spending your Thursday morning with us. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television on this Thursday morning, and the weather's just out of this world. Yes, it is. Fantastic. All right. Let's see who's on the show today, Wayne. That's a good question. We have Miss Betsy Roseman, the Director of Travel and Tourism, and she's here to talk about hundreds of people coming to our community in the next day or two. You need to wait and hear all about that one. Would somebody leave the gate open? Or? Obviously so. Obviously we so. just have so many fascinating things happening. Now that's true, we do. There we you do. go. Okay. We have Cindy Stollard here. She's the city occupational nurse. She's here to talk about flu season, what you need to do, but she's here to also talk about sprains and strains. And she comes up with all kinds of neat little acronyms on how to remember whether ice or heat you don't want to miss that. Oh, okay. You'll find out more about it. Okay, good. And then, of course, we have <coughs> Georgia Dees, who is the Public Information Officer or D Director of Public Relations at Way Memorial Hospital, here to talk about what's happening with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Lots of good information. Well, you do not want to miss today's show. That's right. So uh, that's that's gonna that's a good segment it too. It is. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's coming up. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Oh my goodness, today's the 10th, right? Well, tomorrow yes. at the Goldsboro Family Y, Goldsboro Parks and Recreation and Wayne County Services on Aging, over at the Senior Center, those organizations will have a dance thing right. going on. It starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. It's the Fall Dance for Seniors. Dance for Seniors. It is a costume party. Oh, fun. Oh, boy. Uh, costumes are optional. Don't have to wear one. I wear one, see, I wear one all the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, cost, uh, prizes will be awarded for best costumes. DJ Wildheart will be the DJ for uh, playing your favorite songs. Refreshments will be served. Bring a snack to share, please. What a good time. Dance is free and open to anyone age 50 and older. So 50, they're, gonna let the, they're, they're letting the young ones in. Yeah, let the youngsters in there. That's huh? right, oh, costume them, party, don't right. forget it. Watch yourself now. Uh, 50 and older only, please. If you'd like information, call Aaron at 705-1785-919-705-1785. Neat, neat. All right, All right, let's see. What else do we have? Discover Wayne. What that is, is Discover Wayne, not Wayne Alley, but Wayne Community College. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. I thought I was missing or something. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> uh, Discover Wayne is an open house for potential students, whether you're high school students or whether you're an adult student who would like to start at Wayne Community College. This will be taking place October 17th and 18th, so mark your calendars. High school students will be there bust in that day from all the high schools or from the entire county. Mm. They'll be coming in to find out more about what Wayne Community College offers. They'll get to be selection of two departments per child to go and visit and see hands-on what exactly happens in each department, whether, you know, whatever you're interested in, nursing, dental hygienist, automotive, whatever it is. Engineering. Engineering, biology, the list goes on and on, but that is the 17th yeah. and 18th of October, and if you're an adult learner who is thinking about going to Wayne Community College, this will be a great <coughs> day for you to hop on board and come see what's happening. Discover Wayne. I love Wayne Community College. Yes, we all do. Love Wayne Community College. What yeah. else is happening? Well, uh, I was going to mention a birthday or two. Yes, okay, please Brett, do. Brett Favre having a birthday today, the football star who, did he, he retired and then he came back and then he retired and then he came back and whatever. I don't know football very well. Uh, the only quarterback, it says here, who before he retired for the first time. Yes. Uh, was to have thrown over 70,000 yards, wow. over 6,000 completions, and over 500 touchdowns. Now that's a record. Good for him. That's a record. Birthday today for Mario Lopez. How old oh, is Mario? Favre is 43, by the way. Mario Lopez is 39, and a lot of people know who Mario Lopez is. Yes. Gained fame on the TV show Saved by the Bell. Yes, he did. Uh, he moved on to other endeavors, such as Dancing with the Stars, and he's also on uh, MTV's America's Best Dance Crew. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't watch MTV, so I don't care. I don't know. Sorry, uh, Ben Vereen having a birthday today. Ben Vereen is uh, quite the actor. Every he's. He was on uh, the, the Roots. He was a big star before that. Yeah, he done oh gosh, a tremendous yes. amount of Broadway. He was almost... Uh, he loves some Broadway. He, I'm telling you, and he sings and he dances, or he used to anyway. He's 66 years now. 
Uh, he, he starred in many Broadway shows from the 1960s on into the 2000s. He almost, uh, he almost got killed in a car accident. Oh my goodness. Somebody hit him. Uh, he was out on the highway and, and somebody hit him for some reason, but uh, uh, a few years back. But he recovered. He was not expected to live, but he recovered as strong as he is, and, uh, and that, that helped him. Dale Earnhardt Jr. having a birthday. Junior is 38 years today. Still a baby. Yeah, um, he, and he, <laughs> he'll always be. Uh, uh, also a birthday today for Stephen Moyer. Now, I don't know this gentleman, but he's, uh, he's a vampire, uh, known for a vampire? Uh, immortality role in the vampire TV series True Blood. Oh, well, which he, one is he? What's he the plays one on TV. Do you know um, what, who he plays? I watched that do show. Know. Stephen Moyer, he's 43, if that tells you anything. Not really, but that's okay. Okay. Tanya, <laughs> Tanya Tucker having a birthday today. The uh, singer's 54 years. She's had problems in her life. She kind of got herself straightened out now, and that's a good thing. She's 54 years. Michael Oliver, former child actor who gained widespread fame for his role as mischievous junior in the movie Problem Child. You yes, remember that movie? I do remember that Hilarious movie. Hilarious movie. Problem child. He's 31 years today. Nora Roberts, the uh, author, is 62. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites, Peter Coyote, the actor, is 71 years today. You know what's happening Happy birthday. Community? This is your special well, day. There you go. Well, well, stay with us. We're going to go and listen to several County interviews and to tell really us. Good. You don't and also give us details on how tourism affects our community. Welcome to the show, Betsy. Well, thank you, Kim. Good morning. Good morning. So we have all kinds of things happening in our community. Tell us what's next for us. Well, in the next day or so, you're going to be, uh, we're going to be invaded by tennis players. Tennis players from all over? All over the state. It is the uh, United States Tennis Association, North Carolina State Singles Championship. Wow. So we'll have players from age 18 to, I guess, 85 is, you know, until. Right. Uh, and they're all coming to Goldsboro, Wayne County. They're coming to Goldsboro, Wayne County. We've secured uh, 48 to 56 courts, depending on the weather. Uh, throughout Wayne County and we have are using some courts in Greene County. Wow, so they're just moving from place to place, court to court? Yes, there will be a, um, a schedule for each of the players and they're not sure, uh, the schedule will probably come out a couple of days before their registration event and um, so they're not sure whether they'll be playing in Mount Olive or Walnut Creek or Goldsboro Country Club until they actually see their schedule. Right. What does this mean to Goldsboro? What does this mean to our community to have you know, this many people come to our community? Well, it puts us on the map, which is great exposure for Goldsboro, Wayne County and Greene County. And also it brings about 500 tennis players to spend money in the hotels, restaurants, shops. Um, we've, Mount Olive Pickle was kind enough to donate these wristbands. So if you have a retail business or restaurant, and you see one of these armbands on them, you know that's a tennis person. And they'll probably be green. They'll, they're all going to be green. Okay, great. And we also have sponsors, the big tennis balls in front of the businesses that uh, dictate that that's the sponsor for the event. We were real tickled. R.A. Jeffries is going to be a sponsor for our players party. And uh, we have a lot of unique things. Um, Duplin Winery was kind enough to create custom labels for all the team captains. That we're putting wine bottles in their gift bags. Nice. So we have thanks so many to Duplin Winery here mm -hmm. that are doing fantastic things. So uh, we're, we're very excited. We've got a lot of promotional items for them, a lot of activities planned for them, and they will be here from um, Wednesday, the 9th of October, through Sunday. And the final uh, play is on Sunday. So if you see a tremendous amount of people walking around with tennis rackets, you know they are visitors more than likely to our community. And stop and welcome them and give them ideas of things they can do while they're here in Goldsboro and Wayne County. We appreciate that. And the excellent thing about this is we put a bid in um, last year and we secured this tournament for two years. So we'll have them again next October. Wonderful. And that's at least 500 players coming to our community. Wow. That says a whole lot for our hotels and our restaurants and our shops and so on and so forth bringing lots of funds to our community to give yeah. back and it'll just in return be right back for our community. And it helps us to be able to provide more sporting events. It gives us the experience because we like to we like to spoil our guests so and for them to have a great time and want to come back. A lot of these people have never been to Goldsboro and it gives them opportunity they find out all the great things we have here mm -hmm. and they'll come back on their own. Wonderful. What else is happening in Goldsboro? Well, it's fall, so it's this is busy, busy time. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we'll have uh, the fair just wrapped up, and um, I'm sure Eddie did a 
tremendous job, Eddie and his staff. And um, then we have, uh, coming up, we'll have um, Jazz on George on the 26th of October. And more information will come about that. Tell us what Jazz on George is. It's basically, it's an afternoon and evening live concert of assorted jazz. It's sponsored by the Arts Council and the Downtown Goldsboro Development Corporation. And it's on the corner of George and Walnut. Always a great time. I guess we've been doing it for... A long time. You know, six or seven years. Mm -hmm. And it gets bigger and bigger. Um, the also, the Paramount series starts on the 25th of October. And that is, there's five, I believe, five in the series. And they bring in outside performers. Uh, this one will be a ventriloquist, which is great for kids. Yes. And so we hope everyone would come out Friday on the 25th in the evening for that. You'll start to see the billboards for it going up. Um, they should be up by now. And that all goes through Travel and Tourism. Mm -hmm. All that is sponsored through Travel and Tourism dollars. Yeah, what we do is we try to market our events. Uh, Jazz on George you'll see on newsandobserver.com online. Uh, you'll see billboards for the Paramount. You'll also see our state ads. Paramount, Jazz on George, things like that. Our state magazine. Our state. So there's so many things that travel and tourism does that the community may not really know that that's who is spearheading all of that. Mm -hmm. So you really take all the different large-scale events that are happening in our community and you market for them. You right. help market to the outside world as well as our own community. Is that correct? That's correct. We do uh, another venue we advertise is... Uh, Guest Quest, which runs all over the Northeast, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. Uh, it's one of our big draw areas, the Northeast, that come to our area, especially in the wintertime for golf, things mm -hmm. like that. We, uh, carolinaliving.com, it's an yes. e-newsletter. That's North and South Carolina. We actually get editorial about our community, as well mm -hmm. as we can promote events and festivals, whatever's going on. And one of the things that up until a couple years ago I wasn't even aware of is that you do advertise a lot in our state magazine. Yes. So in the back of our state where you see all the different ads about communities, you're going to see things about Goldsboro and Wayne County all the time. And our state has been a tremendous partner with us. They came in on uh, January of last year and did mm -hmm. that, a 35-page essay on Seymour Johnson. Yeah, that was wonderful. And that's something money cannot buy. And that's, you know, we've developed this relationship with our state over the years. I know Bernie Mann, who's the... Uh, publisher of mm -hmm. our state. He came and spoke to Rotary. He certainly this past did. My year. Rotary group. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we actually have someone from the Division of Tourism speaking to Rotary in November. That's right. That's so right. we're very excited because uh, tourism in North Carolina is a $19 billion industry. And you know, I think that's one thing that, that we may not always be aware of. What a large industry mm -hmm. tourism is across the United States and across the world, but even right here in our own state, $19 billion industry. That's huge. Yeah, we're six in the country for tour, um, tourism, and depending on who you ask, we either are second or third industry in the state. And then now with film coming up, there's more so much more, more North Carolina. in film, and that's something that we're going to be very aggressive uh, with. Um, now that we've got some other things behind us, we're right. going to be able to go after some, hopefully, some, some opportunities film. for film. You never know. You may see cameras all around our community <laughs> filming movies and other things. You just never know. Yeah, it, yeah. it keeps life very exciting and interesting. I imagine it does. I imagine. Well, thank you, Betsy. I appreciate you coming and sharing a little bit about what's already happened and a whole lot about what's going to be happening right here in Goldsboro. So don't forget, if you see all those tennis players, welcome to Goldsboro. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. And this is what's happening with travel and tourism in your community. Thanks for watching. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television, in the heart of Goldsboro, in the heart of Wayne County. Today in the studio, I have with me Miss Cindy Stollard. She is the occupational health nurse with the city of Goldsboro. She's here today to talk about strains, sprains, and the flu season. Very Welcome good. to the show, Cindy. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim. As the weather is getting cooler, more people are going out and exercising. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about sprains, strains, and how we can take care of it at home. And that does happen when we exercise more. Yes, it does. And a lot of those things can be treated at home and not have to go to the emergency room because that can be very costly. Yes, it can. So um, one of the first things you do if you have a sprain is uh, there's an acronym called RICE. R stands for rest, so you want to rest, not be moving around because it's sore. I stands for ice, and then C for compress, and E for elevate. 
So all those Rice, things put together. -E. Right. So we're going to use your wrist as an example. All, all right? right. You just got done moving all that furniture in your office, and you have strained <laughs> your wrist. So okay. We're just going to put this over. This is um, we've got you resting right now, and so this is the not the ice yet, but the compress. Okay. The C for compress. And then once this is on there, it just kind of gives a little bit of pressure to the area that's been injured. It does. You feel it tighten more and more. There we go. And so we'll just use one of these for now. Before I get my finger out from under it. <laughs> All right. So, and then you would elevate. Okay. And then we've got the ice. And you would put ice on for 20 minutes at a time. And in between 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and continually do that. And if you can get into a position where you can elevate your wrist above your heart, okay, it wouldn't throb. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so like if you have, a, okay, right. If you have an ankle, you want to be on a couch with it propped up on several pillows, and that'll make you more comfortable. Well, how long would you do this 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off? Well, you don't have to do it while you're sleeping. Obviously, right. that's difficult. Mm -hmm. But um, 48 hours is a good number. Okay. Right. A lot of people tend to put heat on things and because heat feels better. Right. But initial an injury should be treated with ice. It does much better. How do you know the difference? I know we sometimes we get that mixed up, whether it's heat or whether it's ice. How do we know? It, do we always start with ice? Always. Always start yeah. with ice. That okay. way you don't have to worry about what you do. And people tend to just put heat on it automatically. Right. But ice is better for the injury. And tell me why. Um, it decreases the swelling. The cold decreases the swelling. It, it shrinks those little vessels that bring all the blood, bruising, and things like that. So. Well, that's good to know because I always myself wonder, and I know there's probably many out there, do, which do I do? Which one is appropriate right. for this particular injury? So right. always start with ice. Right. All right, wonderful. All right. You're a good patient. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> My arm feels so much better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then we're going to talk a little bit about flu season. That is upcoming real fast. Um, if people have an opportunity to get a flu vaccine, it would be the best thing they could do to protect, protect themselves. Um, it takes about two weeks to build up your immunity after you have your flu vaccine. So that is something that people always wonder if that thing that is really quickly. working. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, make sure you cover your cough. Um, a lot of people are getting more familiar with using their sleeves. Right. right mm -hmm. Because then the germs dry and you're not having them on your hands. Um, good frequent hand washing is very important, as always, um, especially during the flu season. If you're sick, stay home. People tend to come to work because they think the place won't survive without them. <laughs> but if you're sick... But will it? <laughs> I know. It really will. I know. It really yeah. will. A day or two at home does everybody good. Right. And it does your, your co-workers good, too, if you're sick. So stay at home if you're not well. Um, of course, get the flu vaccine. We talked about that. Washing hands. And that's about it. Um, well, with the, the locations here in Goldsboro and throughout our community, they're already out with the flu shots in several locations. Is that correct? Are, yes. So you have a lot of the, the uh, pharmacies and things like that that are giving them away for free. They're encouraging patients to come. But then you also have like the senior center mm -hmm. and various other places that um, senior citizens, of course, can go and get their flu shot. So we want to really look around as to where people can go. But what are the advantages? Because I hear pros and cons. I hear some people say, oh, I'm not getting that flu shot. It's not worth it. So tell me what you think the advantages really are. If you didn't get the flu vaccine, you have a better chance of contracting the flu itself. And it could be a pretty tough one. There are a lot of people that die every year, elderly, the small children. So we could be a carrier of flu and take that to a grandparent or a mother that's, you know, not got her immune system very strong or to a small baby. And we certainly don't want to do that. So, um, so you may not see the symptoms yourself, but you may just be a carrier. Right. And we can actually be contagious before we feel like we're sick. So it's kind of one of those hidden things that you don't, you're not aware until maybe the next day and you think, how many people did I go see yesterday? Right, right. And so by getting the flu shot or the flu vaccine, you are preventing yourself from being a carrier and, right. and exposing your friends and your family exactly. to, to the virus as well. Yeah, so it's real important. Wonderful. It's real that important. time of year, folks. It go is. out, get your flu shot, protect yourself. It's going to be happening for the next few months. 
It, will it is be. here. It is upon us, and we want to do everything we can to try to stay healthy. Wash your hands nonstop. I hear that every year, but that is something that we can't say enough, right, it, Cindy? It is. It's so important. That little action is, is so important. And then yeah. go back one time and remind us about our, our strains and our sprains. Use the acronym RICE. R for rest, I for ice, C for compress, wrapping something around it, and then E for elevate. And uh, you can take care of it at home. There you go. And there are little tricks of the trade. And we appreciate you being here today, Cindy. And this is what's happening in the city of Goldsboro. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. In the heart of Goldsboro, in the heart of Wayne County. Have you wondered what's happening with health care? Well, today on the show, I have joining me Georgia Dees. She is the Director of Public Relations at Wayne Memorial Hospital. Let's find out what's happening in health care. Welcome to the show, Georgia. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for letting us come tell our story. We are glad to have you here, and you can give us an update. And I know it's ever evolving and ever changing, but right. can you tell us what's currently happening with health care? Um, and um, take it, you're talking about the Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield contract Blue Shield. We negotiations. Can, we can specifically One talk about that. One of the things that, that um, it seems to be on everybody's mind these oh, days, yes. um, for good reason. Um, for people who don't know, Blue Cross Blue Shield has announced that they're going to end um, their contract with Wayne Memorial Hospital effective December 5th, um, making anybody who has a Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance plan out of network with Wayne if they come to Wayne Memorial Hospital. That doesn't mean that you can't come to Wayne Memorial Hospital. It just means that you're going to pay the out-of-network prices instead of the in-network prices that you've been paying for the last 20-something years. Right. And there's still an opportunity or a chance that negotiations could change and this could be adapted. Is that correct? Absolutely. We hope that they will change. Um, we feel like, you know, there, we know there are a lot of people in Wayne County that have Blue Cross Blue Shield that are concerned about this. And um, Blue Cross Blue Shield is, you know, saying that inviting or encouraging those they're insured to go to other places um, that would be in networks you know, hospitals that are 30 40 miles away and um, people have not you know say they don't want to do that I wouldn't want to do that right um, they're used to getting their care here at home by people they know where they're comfortable and um, so we're trying to negotiate stay in the negotiation so that we can work it out for the patients well tell me if you will give us maybe like an example um, you know I, I know a lot of our county uh, employees and, and many other people in our county and community yeah. have Blue Cross and Blue Shield with the typical 80-20 balance. Right. Can you give us an example of in-network and out-of-network, just a standard visit for something? Sure. Can you give us sort of an example of what you would pay in-network and out-of-network? Sure. Um, and this is just, you know, an, a, a hypothetical situation. Right. You come to the hospital, you're treated, you go home, you get a bill for a thousand dollars. If you're in network with, um, if you have Blue Cross Blue Shield and they're in network with Wayne Memorial as they are right now. Um, and if you have the 80-20. And you have the 80-20 split, which most, of the, that's the most common, I think. Right. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield would pay $800 of your bill and you would pay $200 out of pocket. Okay. Now, if you become, if they are out of network, you can still be seen at the hospital, but Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to pay $700 and you're going to pick up that extra hundred and pay three hundred dollars instead of two hundred. So on this particular example, it's just a one hundred dollars difference actually right. of being in network and out of network. That's right. Oh wow! So you really think about is it worth driving to another hospital? Right. Is it worth being seen by doctors that you're maybe not as familiar with? Correct. And having to take time off work because it's going to take you longer to and from. So that, right. that's just an example, but right. is that hundred dollars worth it for this example anyway? Exactly. Um, well, tell me some of the, uh, the situations that we, we may be seeing as we move forward um, with visits to the hospital and some other changes that may be happening with insurance. Okay. Um, we do have, we are in network with a, a lot of other companies. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, of course, is the largest insurer, but we have great relationships with several others. Those um, companies are listed on our website, waynehealth.org. And so if you are consider if you're a Blue Cross Blue Shield currently um, customer mm -hmm. and you're concerned that after December 5th you won't be in you know considered in network anymore you can go to our website and look to see who is who we do have contracts with now that would that you could switch if you want to switch okay and I'm, I'm assuming you would give some specifics there and you could right. actually go to the those suppliers websites and find out more detailed information right. yeah we would be happy if the, if the information isn't there you want more information you can call um, you're actually calling um, the administrative office. Okay. And 
That number is 919-731-6142. Wonderful. So, but I think one of the things we wanted to do today was clear up some of the what's out there because Blue Cross has made some accusations toward us that we um, feel have been really disrespectful to our staff, the right. people, the physicians, the nurses, everybody who works there, um, and, and talking about our rates being high, higher right. than other places and things like that. And the thing to point out, and, and you, you can even see it on the advertisements that Blue Cross Blue Shield has paid, you know, to put in the news articles, um, when you, they cite their data, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield internal data. So it's all internal. So it's all internal. We don't know where they're getting their calculations. You can go to public websites, the um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. You can go to North Carolina Hospital Association and look at rates. And you will see that um, overall we are lower or very com comparable to other hospitals our size in, throughout the state. And what Blue Cross Blue Shield has done when they point at one procedure um, and say that it's $10,000 here and $2,000 there, well, that could be a procedure that was very, very complicated. Right. Even though it's the same billing code, it's not the same case as this one here. So we just want to make clear that our prices are not out of, terribly out of line. Um, some things are going to be higher, some are going to be lower, just like at every hospital. It's kind of like going to the grocery store and at Walmart you're going to get this for right. you know, $4 and at Foodline you're going to get it for 3 but when you, at the end of the shopping trip, you check out, you know, overall, mm -hmm. where was the cost the cheapest? Exactly. You don't want really to go to one place for one service because of the rate. That, that's so. exactly right. Well, and I'm glad you cleared that up because I know there are many people out there that are wondering what exactly is the situation, right. how did it get to this point, and what possibly could happen in the future. Right. We are, and we have said this since we got word that they were ending um, the contract, that we, are, we want them to come back to the table um, to talk and let's work out a deal. They have given us what they want. We gave them a counter offer. They said no. It's pretty much a take it or leave it. Um, we'd go their way or, you know, it's over. And what people need to understand is that a hospital is an unusual um, operation. You know, we're open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We have to staff people that are going to take care of you in the middle of the night if you need it. Um, whether you're, you need it or not, people, someone needs to be there to care for things like for you, you know, during that time. And um, we're our uh, rates are approved by a board, you know, our board of directors that right. are local people mm -hmm. who live and work, live and and work here in this community. and they have businesses and they know what it takes and right. you know, they're making the decisions. We are not saying, you know, if, when we have rate increases or whatever we have to do, we don't take that lightly. We look at what it costs to operate right, right. and the money that, you know, comes back into the budget. We put into capital expenses. You know, we just opened that new ED, which is, was much needed Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Um, and things like that. So um, we just want people to know that we're about the community. We, we, we're part, we're, of, we're community. part of the community. Our employees live here, work here. Their kids go to school here. Right. And, you know, nobody, we're not going to do anything. We're, we're going to do the best w that we can for the people in this county because we want to be the provider you know, of their health care. Absolutely. And we should be. Well, well moving, yes, you should. And moving forward, what can people do to protect themselves? What, what do people need to do to protect themselves? Okay. Um, if you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, they, there's a person there that we are sending um, you, you two to answer concerns. Okay, good. Um, her name is Lisa Cade, and her phone number is 919-765-4596 or you can email her at <coughs> lisa.cade at bcbsnc.com. Okay, and that's specifically Blue Cross and Blue right. Shield. Right, and what you need to do person. is tell them that you want them to get back to the negotiating table. You want to be, Wayne Memorial Hospital to be in network, that's where you want to get your care and they need to come back to the table and work with us. So there you go folks, if you're interested or concerned about Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Wayne Memorial Hospital and that relationship, you can do just that. You can call or email Blue Cross and Blue Shield and tell them how you feel. Tell them that what you want for your hospital to do for you and how you want Blue Cross and Blue Shield to continue negotiations and work out something right. where we can work together moving right. forward. Right. Come back to the table. We can't negotiate by ourselves. <laughs> exactly. And that, that says it all right there. 
Well, thank you for coming and clearing that up, George. I know the community is very interested in what's going to happen moving forward. And if you will, we, we would like to invite you to come back. I will. As negotiations continue, hopefully. Absolutely. And as moving forward, we as a community will know what to do to protect ourselves. That sounds great. We'd love to do that. We appreciate it. And this is what's happening at Wayne Memorial Hospital. Your source for what's happening in your community is Wayne Goldsboro Television. And we are back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for staying with us. Wayne, they were fantastic interviews. I'm they so were. glad that Georgia came on I know. and talked about what is happening with Wayne Memorial Hospital. It certainly cleared the air. A lot of it people did. have questions about that yes. and they're just uncertain as to what they do now as a, uh, as a person who has Blue Cross Blue Shield. And it certainly uh, kind of tells us where we stand right now. Right. And it was, it's ever changing. Yeah, oh yeah. And <laughs> She will continue to come on and, yeah. and give us updates as things do yeah. change and evolve. So we'll let you we'll keep up we'll keep up with what's going on and stay with us with that. That's okay? exactly right. All right. Guess who's on Facebook? Who? The Senior Center. Well, how about that? How about that? They uh, check out the Facebook page and and find and friend uh, the uh, Senior Center. They're listed as Wayne County Services on Aging. And the address is, I'm not going to read you the address because it's eight you miles long. If you just search for it. Yeah, it'll come up. You'll find All it. All right. Yeah. You know, there's so many people. Social media makes a huge influence on today's generations. It does. It, it, does. it, it just does. I mean, there are grandparents, there are middle age, there are youth oh, yeah. on social media. If you want to stay with today's communication styles, that's one way that is extremely important and is very influential right now. What gets me is that back in 1980 and 1990, right. there was no Facebook and there was no... That's right. Uh, you uh, had to use different means. You had to use different means. Uh, computers were just uh, PCs, home computers, Macs were just coming into right. their popularity in the early 80s and 90s. But wow, since then, and what gets me is that, uh, is that the youngsters uh, who are 20, to me they're youngsters, Right. 20 and 30 years oh, of age. Oh, they don't know life any different. They, it's all, yeah, this is part of a living to them. Right. They, but to me, I'm, it's still, it's new discovery. Every right. day is discovery. So, uh, well, the county is, I'm an old man. You all have a Facebook page. You're constantly putting information out all there the about time. what's happening in the county. The city has a very active mm -hmm. Facebook page. And every day we're updating it with events and mm -hmm. things that are happening and news briefs and the list yeah. goes on and on. But it's hey. a great one tool to stay connected. I rem when I was a kid, my telephone number was 705. Just those three numbers? Just those three numbers. That's how, that's how far back it goes and how quickly it's changed over the years. Of course, it was a rotary dial because nobody had push buttons back then. Right. And, uh, and my grandparents were on a party line. You know what a party line is? I'm that's assuming you share it you with share others? It, yeah, you shared it with other people in your neighborhood. Of course, back my then. My, how times changed. Yeah. Yeah, and, and depending on what kind of ring you had on the telephone, you could have had two longs and one short, or uh, three shorts and one long or two longs. Well, you know how you feel about social media? Yeah. I bet your grandparents felt the same way whenever everybody got their own telephone number. Yes. And they all had push button. Yeah. So oh, see, they, they it's felt just great. life evolves. Life evolves. Of course, they also felt great when they got indoor plumbing. But that's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that goes way back <laughs> in another part of the world. Oh, but anyway, goodness. I digress quickly, I do. <laughs> I wanted to remind you, on the 19th of October, <laughs> East Carolina University's School of Theater and Dance will be at the Paramount Theater. And I have seen them, and they are fantastic. Wow. If you are a theater and dance guru, and if that is something that interests you, make sure you get your ticket. It's Saturday, October the 19th. 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $10. You can get them at the box office at the Paramount Theater. You can also probably find out more de details on what you'll be seeing on the Paramount's website as well. Wow. So lots of things happening. Don't forget about that jazz gumbo. It's That's happening right. all through the month of October. Oh, I love it. You know, uh, tomorrow, today is Thursday, and tomorrow our guest host will be back That's with right. you. That's uh, right. It will be Little Wayne. No, not Lil Wayne. He's a rapper. <laughs> Lil <laughs> Wayne. Lil Kim. No, she's a rapper. She's too. a rapper too. Oh, no. You can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. Because we're not rappers, no, and neither no. are they. I don't even break dance. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway, it'll be uh, it'll be uh, uh, Donald Sutton and and uh, Krista will be here. Okay, there you go. There you go. It'll be great. Same so, show, different folks. <clears throat> there you go. Same kind of show. So anyway, join us again tomorrow. We'll be right. 
they'll be right here and we'll be back Monday. How's that? So, that sounds great. So uh, in advance, allow me to say, please have a good weekend and take care of yourself. Drive carefully and get outside and do something. Even if it's raining a little bit, it won't hurt you. <laughs> good for you. Might grow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, do that and we'll be back in here with you Monday. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.